today this video will demonstrate the use of change management in Service Desk 7.0 and Service Desk 7.1. So from right now we're logged in as Technician 1. We're going to go to the Submit Requests section and then go under the Service Desk category. We're going to select request change and at this point we're going to input a change we want to request. We'll select the urgency of the change. Um, for this purpose we're just going to select a support service urgency. We can then also select a requested completion date for the change. Put in the change title. Um, for this demo we're going to use that we're going to be creating a change of Outlook um, and Exchange sort of needing an upgrade. So we'll put something like that in the title. And then we will add the information and description about the change and justification about the change so that when it gets submitted to the change authorization individuals in the cab, it can be they can understand what the change request is for and the business justification for that this change request and after we get played with this we will click the continue button to go on to the next step this will submit the change and give us a confirmation page where we can review the request that we're about to submit um, we can then submit the full request in and have the information in. be submitted to the change manager for approval it's going to show all of our information about the change that we're being requested. And then we had a confirmation with that change ticket number. Next, we're going to open a new browser window that is logged in as the change manager. First, let's close that. And let's go in. We're going to open which is logged in as one of the, one of the change managers. And we'll see that change request at the top. And it's um, going to need its initial change management approval. Change Manager is a gatekeeper. He's going to do a base level approval of a lot of the changes, uh, the changes that they get first submitted. We'll see, can see the change information up in the top left, um, the requester, and then possible things where who the process is assigned to, um, descriptions, and then information about it. We're showing that we send an email to the end user that it was who requested the change. So first we click Approve Change. And this is going to bring up the window where we can get the information about the change details and justification and the change manager will then select to approve that change which they've read through all that information. They select that and then we will go through and choose what type of change we want to make. So either ITIL, moderate, simple or emergency. For this circumstances we're going to just do this ITIL method. Um, these all are based upon how many people you can make involved in the change and how they can be involved in the change. So by default we have a change management team that comes in but we're going to use custom. We're going to look for some users that we want to give particular roles within the change. So we're going to use one of our users called John Dollar and we're going to search for him. We're going to make him do the risk assessment and be one of the change authorization. Change authorization makes them part of the CAB um, change advisory board. So next we're going to do um, M Hammer and we're going to make him part of the change authorization or CAB. So we select the user and then we select change authorization, add participant in, and then we can select another user. Um, this user we're going to select because we want technician one who originally requested the change um, not to be a risk uh, assessment but to do the plan creation so we add in that user and then lastly we want one more person to be part of the change authorization so we're going to add in an administrator of the systems to be um, one of the change authorizations so a domain administrator select that and then we need to select change authorization add. So now we have three people that are on the change board, John Dollar, M Hammer, and Technician One. Now we need to choose when the risk assessment and the scheduling will be done. We're going to choose that after the risk assessment by the change manager. 
So then we have our different change people, part of the change, who's going to do the risk assessment, who's going to do the plan creation, and all the other lists are part of people who are going to do the change authorization or be members of the CAB. So now we submit this request. Um, as we're continuing with the approval process, we're continuing to submit it. So that gives us our next step. Um, from here, we need to go and to go to the user going to do the risk assessment. Um, so that's going to be John Dollar. So let's bring up another browser. Um, log into Process Manager. It's going to log us. Let's log in with John Dollar because he needs the next step is the risk assessment. So let's log in with him so we can do that risk assessment. Log in with John Dollar. See, so he has a new task. Let's go to the My Task list and open up that task. And we're going to change management underneath the task viewer and we'll select the task for that particular change we're working on. So you can see that he has the access risk as the action and all the other information is about the same as it looks like coming from the other points of view, um, the change manager and other points like that. So I'm going to go up to access risk. We'll see that we now have a risk score that we can set. Um, one being the lowest, 10 being the highest. I think we're going to choose a moderate risk score for this for about a 7. Um, and then put in a reason why that has been assessed as the risk. Um, I think the risk for this be a little bit higher because it's above average for the fact that it's going to affect a lot of people. But risk is going to be something that is to be determined per environment, per company as to how they're going to access the risk. They may create documents or plans, particularly that how they need to access the risk. Um, some customizations that have happened to this is that you may want to fill out a form to, require, uh, to assess the risk, and that's going to be something that you could customize this form to show during the risk assessment portion of the process. So once we put that information in, we can attach documents in this also. Um, we can then submit that. Once it's submitted, we can go on to the next portion. The next portion of this would be the scheduling. And we indicated that the change manager was going to do the scheduling, so we'll come back into the change manager, go to my task list for him, and then open that task. And in that task, we'll see that we now have an action of create schedule and of all the other information about the risk and everything has been documented in the change underneath the history. So go underneath create schedule, and we're going to choose when we want this risk to occur. Um, their date may have been requested by the original submitter, but because of time and information, how changes need to occur in the environment, we choose a particular date when the change can actually occur. So we're choosing um, September 3rd for this circumstances, September 3rd in this calendar being a weekend, um, and we're going to put information in about that as to why that schedule was chosen due to the fact of it being a weekend and it needs to be during non-business hours. to um, keep us from hindering any type of business movement and everything from happening, we're going to do this on September 3rd and we can choose that date as the scheduler. So as part of this page also, you can make changes reoccurring. So down at the bottom we can make this a reoccurring change if this was a change that was going to happen once a month or a certain time frame. Um, for this particular one we're not going to choose that, but once we've done the schedule we can submit it and the schedule will be submitted. All right, so once we've submitted the schedule, we now have to have the plans created. That is underneath Technician 1. As each of these tasks get assigned to the different people, they're going to get emails to the entire group saying that the change has gone to the next step. Now we can create our plans. Um, for those circumstances, we're going to create uh, first the implementation plan. Um, this will show us when we're going to implement it and what needs to happen during the implementation server upgrade information we put in here um, who will be implementing this change to so choose themselves only because that's who we want to do this change particularly um, and that change implementers list is based upon a group within service desk all gets listed there um, first I'm going to start putting some information in this 
in my station plan, but let's actually put this in a point format so we can use the HTML editor and put this in a format that will give us a lot more sort of text changes and in other information. So we're going to say that we're going to download um, the server upgrade installer. We're going to make the necessary changes before running the installer to the server. Anything that would be necessary for implementing this change would need to be listed here so that when it gets to the approval state, those people can see the points in which the implementation would be done and what implementation would be done to like do this change and what needs to be ran to make the change occur. Once we have this done, we could also decide if it's got new equipment or add a document and once that's complete, we'll click next. And the next thing that needs to be done is a test plan. So this would be the plan which was going to occur after the change has occur has been done to test and make sure that everything has been performed correctly and that it's back up and running um, so that we want to make sure that everything is back up and functional after the change has occurred. So we put in some different things that we can done to test it um, and once the implementation done the tester will have to run through and confirm that it's passed each one of these testing parts of the plan. There's a spell checker on all of these forms so if we do spell anything wrong, um, truly wrong or just seen as wrong by the system we can fix that um, as we're going along by using the spell checker. Sometimes the words don't necessarily fit, so maybe we just leave it in there because it matches what we want it to say, but it doesn't necessarily spell right. And then we go next now from here, and we will put in the backup plan. The backup plan is going to be what's going to happen if the implementation fails and does not pass the test, how we're going to get back to a state of functionality that we needed and we're at before we did the change. So at this circumstances, we're going to use a backup from the night before and then up, go back to that before the upgrade. We can click next now and then go back into, and we can see all the plans. Um, we can add other plans or we can just submit as we're gonna do. go ahead and do right now. All right, so the plans have been submitted. Um, we now need to get approval for this. So we can go underneath Giant Dollar because he is one of the listed approvals. We're going to go to his my task list. We're going to open up change management project type and then look at that task that's available. We'll see that we have an authorized change listed there for him. He's going to list that authorized change. He's going to be able to look at the actual change information. You can click the tab up above and look at the change details um, or he can just go to the plan approval section and approve the plan directly. So once he clicks continue He's going to be listed, given all the plans, um, and he can needs to go through and look at each one of these plans and confirm that he's kind of looked at, go and look through and kind of get information on each one of them. So he can look at the test plan, the back out plan, um, and then the implementation plan, and then go back on that. Once he clicks continue, it'll ask him for an approval or deny of the actual request. Um, he can click approve, and then it is his step is done and is finally approved. Now let's close this and log out from Giant Dollar because we want to log in as another user. Um, first we'll log in as the administrator who is also listed as one of the change authorizations part of our cab board. So we're going to log in as him and we would then go and open that chain from my, my task list. We open that chain from the my task list and that would give us our change management list. We select the change management from there and then we go and we can do another authorize of the change. Continue from there from this page. We've already looked at these plans so let's just skip this. What it does give us a warning that we did not look at the documentation. We can just request to continue and then do an approval anyways without looking at the documentations. Administrators already been just told so it has this M Hammer, uh, Mike Hammer user we're going to log in with him log in and we can authorize the change also if they've both seen the documentation already or already discussed it they may just need to go in and do an approval now the change will be wait for all of these approvals to occur it can't be just approved by one it has to be approved by all the ones that are listed in the change with the ITIL fashion that we chose so we're going to do an authorized change here 
you can click continue again and that would authorize his level of this change click continue and then say yes to continue and approve the change even though we didn't look at the documents all right so now we can close this we're done with our change authorization the cab is fully approved this change so now we're going to go back and we're going to go in as our change manager once the cab is fully approved of the change the change manager is still the gatekeeper so they have to do a final authorization of the change making sure that all the ducks are in a row that everything has been approved that all the information is there that all the every piece has been finalized so they're going to go in and just check the information on that We'll go and do a final approval of the change um, mostly as a gatekeeper they can open and look at all the documents continue and making sure that they see all the changes have been all everything about the change has been approved once they do that they can finalize and approve the actual the, the end of the change um, the next piece that's going to happen in this is it's going to wait for the implementation date um, this waits for the date to come when it was scheduled but as a change manager you can also come in here and we can view this waiting um, task and we can actually do what's considered a force implementation now now for our demoing purse let's do that only because we don't want to wait for the change to actually occur to have it happen so we're forcing the implementation now we can come over here and look as the tech as the actual implementer who is our technician one they now have a task assigned to them they can come into here and they can implement the actual change um, you'll see that as a task that's underneath my actions for this individual they will click the implement change and this will bring up the information about the change this would happen after they've actually done everything they fulfilled the change they've done, gone through the plans and information and they can say yes that they've um, implemented the change they've done the detail of the change and they have implemented the change so the implementation is done um, we're going to refresh the screen because the technician one is actually our tester also so they can go in now and test the change so he's going to have to say that it did execute, execute the test plan and the change was successful if the change was successful and this would continue and they're going to put a comment in as to what was occurred during the change and whether or not it did successful in this for this circumstance we'll say that there was no problem seen um, after the change was implemented And we submit that and now we're done with that step now we'll come in here and go to our change manager again and then go to the home on this one so we can just look at that change there's going to be a few more items that have to happen with the change um, we need to as after the change has occurred um, and been tested and everything We'll get a verify change task for the change manager. The change manager is just going to read the information again, gatekeeping at the end to say whether or not the change was successful or failed. Um, and then again, after that has happened, there's some review points for the change. So there's a review of the completed change by the change manager. Um, the review of the completion and indicate also that it was reviewed completed and now a task will be set for 30 days from the day of the end of the change to review and make sure there's no outstanding things or secondary things that happened after this change occurred thank you for watching our change management video if you would like further information about change management or further demos or discussions on possible customizations that can happen within change management Please feel free to contact us at workflow at itsdelivers.com or through our website at www.itsdelivers.com. Thank you very much for listening and watching this video. My name is Joshua Brown. I am a workflow and Altiers engineer for ITS Partners.